I wanted to share with you a, a true story. It's a thought-provoking story. And I'm going to read it to you because it appeared in a newspaper and it's not copyrighted. Well, here we go. A man sat at a metro station in Washington, D.C. and started to play the violin. It was a cold January morning. He played six Bach pieces for about 45 minutes. During that time, since it was rush hour, it was calculated that thousands of people went through the station, most of them on their way to work. Three minutes went by, and a middle-aged man noticed there was a musician playing. He slowed his pace and stopped for a few seconds and then hurried up to meet his schedule. A minute later, the violinist received his first dollar tip. He had salted his violin case with a couple of bucks to show people that he was accepting tips. A woman threw the money in the till and without stopping continued to walk. A few minutes later, someone leaned against the wall to listen to him. But the man looked at his watch and started to walk again. Clearly, he was late for work. The one who paid the most attention was a three-year-old boy. His mother tagged him along, hurried, but the kid stopped to look at the violinist. Finally, the mother pushed hard, and the child continued to walk, turning his head all the time. The action was repeated by several other children. All the parents, without exception, without exception, forced them to move on. In the 45 minutes the musician played, only six people stopped and stayed for a while. Only six. About 20 gave him money but continued to walk their normal pace. He collected $32 in 45 minutes. When he finished playing and silence took over, no one noticed. No one applauded. There was no recognition of any kind. No one knew this, but the violinist was Joshua Bell, one of the best musicians in the world. He played one of the most intricate pieces ever written with the violin, worth $3.5 million. Two days before his playing in the subway, Joshua Bell sold out at a theater in Boston, and the seats averaged $100. This is a real story. Joshua Bell playing incognito in the metro station was organized by the Washington Post as part of a social experiment, but about perception, taste, and priorities of people. There's another message here I'll come to. The outlines were in a commonplace environment. Do we stop to appreciate it? Do we recognize the talent in an unexpected context? Each passerby had a quick choice to make, one familiar to commuters in any urban area where the occasional street performer is part of the cityscape. Do you stop and listen? Do you hurry past with a blend of guilt and irritation? Aware of your cupidity, but annoyed by the unbidden demand of your time and your wallet? Do you throw in a buck just to be polite? Does your decision change if it's really bad? What if it's really good? Do you have time for beauty? Shouldn't you? What are the moral mathematics of the moment? As I had said three days earlier, Bell had played for a full house at Boston Symphony, where fairly good seats went for 100 bucks. But on this day, he collected just $32.00. 17 cents for 45 minutes for his efforts. Contributed by only 27 of 1,097 passing travelers. Only seven people stopped to listen, and just one of them recognized the performer. The questions posed by this event are, do we do our best even with an unappreciative audience? Do we? We should. Because we love it? We should. Passion, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be defeated. Joshua Bell played for 45 minutes knowing that he may make little or nothing compared to his usual and annual take-home pay of over $1 million because he loved it, because he had a passion for it, because it did not matter what the pay was. The benefits always follow 
persistence, dedication, determination, but more importantly, passion. The next question is, do we miss what is in front of us and miss the valuable because we are too busy with the mundane of life? I hope not. I hope you learned something from that true story. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. You may not realize this, but you giving me the opportunity to help you become a better you has also given me the opportunity for me to become a better me. 